Hello, my name is Cornell Francis Jr. from Florida Agriculture and Mechanical University, a second year agribusiness scholar. <clears throat> Millennials today may I ask the question, what legacy will you leave? Will it be determined by your destiny or your downfalls? See, I'm proud enough to honor God for my shortcomings and my success. I will never be who I am today if I didn't praise my failures like I praise my achievements. It was just last September when I entered the elevator speech contest at Regionals in Atlanta, Georgia. I prepared for my best, felt empowered in my present, and when I did in place and sat there in disbelief, I had to honor my past. Like I said earlier, I had to praise my shortcomings. Where I stood then prepared me for where I am now. That is what matters is all about. And for the future of agriculture, we must prepare for where we are going, where we stand now and recognize where we started. Speaking of starting, it all begun in 1985 at Michigan State University when a small group of students decided to form an organization for agriculture students called Minority Agriculture and Natural Resources Association. The first leadership conference was held at MSU in 1986 with Pennsylvania State University and their organization was called Minorities in Agriculture. It was the third annual conference where they adopted minorities in agriculture, natural resources, and related sciences, what we know today as manners. Manners has taught me a handful of skills to take me wherever I go. I realized that there is a certain way to sit at the table with CEOs, Fortune 500 recruiters, and professionals from around the world. What legacy will you leave? Manners Collegiate members, at the table you sit up at amongst success stories and unsuccessful stories that turn out to be great. Will you stab that meat with a fork or will you cut it just as you were cut from a different thread? Surely you and I did not give you a far looks, but because we have a driven purpose, Manners is here for ethnic minorities to lead in your respective companies where you may just be the sheer number. Manners is here to make you a majority and a leading force to be reckoned with. Because once we learn how to prepare ourselves for our future by our dress, etiquette, and language, then, just then can we lead and feel empowered at the career fair, the interview, and finally the workplace. Now that sounds like a good deal. It was in 1991 when Manners introduced the career fair to conference, which was held in my hometown of Gainesville, Florida. Now, Manners has chapters in 38 states, divided into six regions, representing over 60 colleges and universities. Presently, Manners' motto is changing the face of agriculture by linking hands around the world. If we fail to live by our motto, how do we expect to promote change? Change comes with like minded individuals selling at like minded things, such as agriculture. How do we start? Is it by the grain of seed, the handshake, or the education that we teach? Safe to say, it is all of them. Because once we link hands with that farmer to grow, he or she will link hands with that middleman to sell, and then it trickles down to economics and supply chain, and what we call agribusiness. One of the many studies of agriculture today. Booker T. Washington once said, no race can prosper until it learns there is as much dignity in tilling a field as there is in riding a home. Now that speaks volume. That race can prosper in minorities once we learn that agriculture cannot be stopped, seized, or put on hold. This present generation does not realize the advantages of studying agriculture. Indirectly or directly is a positive because we all need moving parts. Whether it's public relations, economics, business administration, accounting, or the related health fields, Mr. Rock should portray that we need dignity moving forward. Shifting the face of agriculture is going to take some time. Time and opportunity is the only, only thing in front of us. And in this present moment, we must think about the future of agriculture. Onward thinking, we can optimize the future of agriculture by planting one seed at a time. This time does not matter what we plant, but how we plant it. And that is what competitors are doing now to make sustainability and efficiency make more sense. I trust that the upcoming agriculture scientists and technology experts of today will find better ways to increase crop production for farmers. It starts here. It starts now. The number of minorities operating, operating agriculture is not large by numbers at all. Speaking with an employee from the USDA, I quote, there is a dire need for more African Americans in agriculture and we cannot find them. I'm here to tell you that the focus will change for the future of ag everywhere. The industry will start to become more diverse, innovative, and transparent. 
Speaking on innovation and listening to an interview from one of our diamond level sponsors, Monsanto, Dr. Rob Fraley, the chief technology officer, talks about the future of modern agriculture. In the interview, I quote, agriculture is changing because of the technology. The technology he speaks of is self-driving tractors, satellite imagery, sensors, and the big, biggest phenomenon, drones. Now, whoever saw that coming? I believe the people behind this shape the agriculture world. We create our own destiny, and today is the start of something great. I challenge every millennial, professional, and graduate to accept the task of shaping agriculture by one seed at a time, one handshake at a time, and one educator at a time. Let's not forget to prepare for our future, empower ourselves in the present, and honor our past. So I leave you with this. What legacy will you leave?